Welcome to Core with Surf Sturdy, Episode 2. This one's going to be about The Hills Have Eyes, the original and the remake, and a lot of random horror talk. I have two guests with me, my boy Chris and my boy Rob, so I'm just going to jump right into it and get started, and I'll start off with you, Rob. What got you into horror, and what's your favorite horror movie? Got me into horror, probably <clears throat> sneaking into, sneaking into the TV room. Uh, at Christmas and Thanksgiving when I was younger, when all the uh, mainly not really adults but the older kids were watching, you know, movies like Pet Cemetery and stuff like that, and I'd always just kind of sneak in and most would be cool with it till one of the adults came in kicked me out, but I'd still get enough of a thrill to watch it, you know, and mm -hmm. see what it's all about. My neighbors, <clears throat> their parents really let them watch, you know, a ton of ton of films like that that I got to watch even though it scared me half to death most of the times when I was real little still I always I always you know came back for more and then when I could finally you know start getting you know watching it myself and going to the movie store and rent movies myself you know some of you kids don't even know what renting movies is anymore Not at all. <laughs> it's just like buying cassettes and listening to CDs I miss it. <laughs> those were the days but anyways yeah and then I think the f one of the first films I rented because they didn't have the original film was the was the sequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two, and I instantly fell in love with that movie. The humor, the gore, the characters, everything about it. And when I was I finally able to go get my own copy and I watched that movie repeatedly, and it's just become my absolute favorite. Even though sequels aren't always the huge <coughs> huge hit with horror movies especially, I think that one really did it, you know, it's, I think it's the original Texas Chainsaw is the classic, and the sequel is the cult classic, so that would definitely be my, my, my number one favorite horror movie. I can see that, it is funny, and Chris, I know you're not real big on horror, but is there any... I watch, I, you know, you know, I, I watch, I'm into it, if I would have to pick one though, I would have to say, um, um, definitely Candyman. Candy Man is definitely that's a good one, one of right my there. favorite horror movies. There's just so many different aspects of it, you know? Like, just his ability to appear behind you, just a big black man, <laughs> you know? With a hook. You know, it's like you're sitting there in the kitchen, you know, you're scrambling your eggs, everything is good, and you turn around, bang! You know what I'm saying? He's like big black jacket and shit, like, that's, you, you know, crazy. You know, like, he was in the projects, you know what I'm saying? Like, he got ties to the hood, you know what I'm saying? Like, Candy Man is definitely... One of my, one of my favorite horror films. You know, that's that's dope. About the Candyman thing, what's cool about him and what's freaky about him is the voice. Like oh, the word. look is one thing, but the voice that yeah. deep Tony voice, Tony like, Todd's got has got the voice. He does. He can tell. I I never met him. I think you have. No. No, you never have. But I think. I think if you ever you ever watch him, he talked to his normal voice. I think he'd have a little bit of a little bit to it, but I don't. But I think he definitely perfected that voice. Oh, yeah. He could do it in a heartbeat now, but I think he. It was like a loud whisper. Yeah, a it loud was, monotone whisper. You see him in other films, and he's he's got that voice to it. It's just not as deep not as and deep, not yeah. as creepy unless as he's kid. trying to do his Candyman character, which was awesome. But no, I didn't. We didn't get to meet him, but he was at the Scarecon of last year. I didn't go out of that one, but. Hopefully, wasn't, wasn't he the first one they did this year that wasn't near us? I think he was one of the features. I don't know where it was. That's just the one out in um, I want to say Connecticut. He might have yeah, been at yeah. that one, but then the one we went to this year, yeah, Turning he, Stone, he was at that one last year. Oh no, kid! But I didn't go last year, unfortunately. Yeah, too bad. I mean, I'm I'm glad the people that were there we got to meet. Yeah, you know, Bill Mosley, Caroline Williams, Felissa Rose. What exactly is Scarecon? It's just like. That's basically like Comic Con, but, but horror films. Horror, yeah, it's yep. like so that people dressed up as like Freddy oh, Krueger and shit oh, walking yeah. through we, the streets. We got pictures taking us with the Jason. Of, yeah, <laughs> and oh, yo with this because he's been there before. But like with this, like the way these people dress up, yo, it's amazing. Like you really think that some of these people were straight out the movies. They really, really do their best with they this. They have stuff. a scare con. I thought it was just Comic Con. No. Nah. They got they got con, too. They got oh my god, I just thought of a crazy <laughs> idea. It's like fun. something like that, like for Dragon Ball Z, or like for anime. Do they have something like that? Yeah. I don't that's, know, that's like that? 
an yeah, anime, well, like an anime convention kind of thing, where people would come dressed as like Naruto and oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's more dragons that's shit. more based with the, that goes more mixed with the comic cons. Oh yeah, yeah. but they do oh, have yeah, that. Yeah. When you get it's, the big ones, you got people order, who do all sorts of things like that. Have, like their own con, section. And now you said like actual like actors from these films. Yeah. Oh con? yeah. Yep. I've met, I mean, if you've ever seen the Friday the Thirteenth movies, yeah, uh-huh. I've met. There's a few different people that play Jason. I've met a few of those guys. I've met. Um, Michael Myers. I met a, one or two Michael My- people who play Michael Myers. Now let me uh, ask you this: How did you know it was Jason? How? Yeah, like Just, I, I always felt so bad for like the masked celebrity. Like we could walk right past Ray Mysterio Jr. and, and you wouldn't even know. Was. Right. Well, well, like Kane, the wrestler. Right. You yeah. know, Kane Hodder, who played Jason through seven up to Jason X. X. He's really, he's really come, you know, come out by, you know, he's really made, you know, himself known. The other ones were like one and dones, he's, you know, yeah, he he, played, but he played it multiple times. Oh, so probably the, the same most, guy all these times? No, no. no it's it was like a golden eye situation. Up till, yeah, up till seven, it was somebody different every time. And oh, then, yeah. And, and a fun fact is in part eight, when they find, when Jason takes Manhattan, when they finally get to Manhattan, one of this big bulky cook in the diner that he picked that tries to charge Jason, he picks him up and throws him up against the wall. Was I can't I know know his first name's Ken. I'm not sure his last name, but he actually took Kane's spot in Jason versus Freddy. Uh, so you're so saying that, that big guy, um, Jason came to a diner to get some coffee and uh, he's chasing no, two, 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 chasing two, two guys, he's chasing uh, two kids. Oh, 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 he's chasing he, he, he burst through the diner. I thought where he they was are. making an order. Like, can, can, um, <laughs> oh, can I just have on um, water with lemon, please? And that yeah, movie was um, so crazy. That I'm surprised they hilarious. didn't do I'm such a thing. Somebody named Kelly. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Already, it's such a comical, you know, feel. I was never really a big fan of Jason. You know what I'm saying? See that? Like, I don't I, know. Like, not even the film. I love the film. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. But Jason as an individual, because he was a cock blocker. Hey, man. <laughs> you know, it was but, always some random yeah, guy about to get some pussy. Oh, yeah. And Jason that's, just that's, that's the theme. That's the theme that I always went with. He has a real, I mean, put it this way. The teens, when he was a kid, he looked all crazy, right? And the teens that were supposed to be watching him. They let him drown. They're over there having sex, getting high, and getting drunk. So he's like, all right, I'm going to show you guys. Yeah, so it's like, you guys want to fuck? Rule, rule number one, we got to Camp Crystal Lake, you know. And I, to top it off, with your pants down. they killed his mother. So that's just, that's, you know what I mean? If you've seen the original, if you've seen the original film of Jason, his mother's the killer in the first movie. And at the end of the movie, they cut his, they cut her head off. And the story goes that he was like in the woods or whatever. And he's seen all that happen. Oh, so yeah. then from then on, you go to Camp Crystal Lake, you're not going to make it back. <laughs> More than is Camp Crystal Lake real? Like, I would love to go. Is there a real camp? Actually. We have to find that out. There's a real no, camp No, actually, Crystal the funny Lake. thing, I'm glad you've asked that question because they, it's in Jersey. That's one. And two, they do tour. I'm not sure how often they do, but they do, like, a tour of the camp every once in a while, which mm-hmm. I would love to freaking go to. That'd that be would be so fun. I have to do that shit. That would be cool. And, like, set that up. I never even thought of it. Like, as a kid and stuff, like, you were talking about Jason Takes Manhattan. Like, he literally goes to Manhattan and is, like, right, you know, right across the water. Yeah. You're from the city, so you know. Yeah. But it's, like, right across. And, I mean, I, obviously, as a kid, you don't think about that. I didn't live out there. I didn't know that. And even as I got older, I never thought about it until I seen the whole, you know, the whole, they have that real Camp Crystal Lake where you can go check it out and visit it and all that. And I was like, that's that's pretty freaking awesome. I watched a fun fact about that. I watched, like, a countdown and it's always it's always you know somebody just somebody's opinion by a YouTube video of the countdown of like the, you know all the all the Friday Thirteenth movies ranked, and of course eight didn't place you know was definitely you know pretty pretty low back you know in yeah. like the, you know in like the top you know twelve, um you know more close to like the nine or ten, but they said it would have been ranked much better if the original story that they were impending to do, made you know actually got made there was actually supposed to be a the whole film's supposed to be based in Manhattan, and Jason was supposed to meet his, you know, impending doom by falling off the Statue of Liberty. But wow. when they only got dished a $5 million budget, that's why they had to do the story they did instead. Okay. That's interesting. That's why the, you know, I mean, uh, the, that's why the gore was toned down. I mean, part seven, if you watch, like, the, if you get the box set, you know, if you watch, like, the behind-the-scenes, part seven was a 
gory freaking film. It, it even put like, you know, Freddy, you know, Freddy versus Jason and Jason goes to hell to shame, like the original, you know, yeah. gore they put in, but they cut it all out for, you know, for fear of, you know, getting X ratings, which almost every film, you know, face, especially part five when, you know, again, Jason wasn't even the killer. Spoiler oh, alert. Spoiler, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but for God's sake, that movie's, you know, 40 years old. You haven't seen it by now. It's your own damn fault. <laughs> <laughs> but part, you know what it is about part five? It actually wasn't a bad movie, though. It wasn't. It's just, that's another thing they comment had. Like, it was, it was almost a fan favorite, except for just that one disappointing letdown. But as far as the kills went, this, you know, you know, the Tommy Jarvis... You know, being in the, you know, being in, you know, the facility, you know, Which the, men cool. the mental house and, you know, like is, you know, and then kind of the way they ended it was another thing that people kind of loved or hated, you know, like is, okay, is Tommy Jarvis now, you know, going to be, going to be a killer okay, that or, we'd never yeah. get to see. Which would have been cool. It would have been a cool twist to it. But the one thing about that movie that I didn't get, because they were in that home, right? That institution right. or whatever. Now, I remember when the, uh, I don't remember the guy's name. But remember when the, the guy got killed, the slower guy, whatever you want to call him? Like, yeah. a little mentally slow. I don't want to, you know. Is this the guy from the beginning, the one that? He he, he gets killed. Come. He's going to give the one guy a candy bar that's yeah, chopping Vic, the wood. Vic is the, is the killer okay, Vic. at that scene. And Joey hey. was was uh, was the porky kid. Memory. But he got killed. And then remember the, di the guy who was driving the ambulance or whatever? Yeah, the em uh, paramedic. The EMT, he was his father. Right. How did he know that was his child? Like, it was right. weird. I remember he opened up his wallet and they looked at like a picture or something. There's a picture of him in there. And they said, you know, even at the end of the movie, you know, or they say at the beginning of the movie, you know, no, you know, mother's dead, no father. He was, you know, he's been to a thousand foster homes. So it's like, what, did, you know, the kid, did his father, the only thing you can guess is his father gave him up as a child and just kind of, you know. Chased him down. You know, from a distance, why, you know, yeah. from a distance, kept an eye on him without revealing who he was and. You know, somehow snuck a photo of him when he was older and looked like he did now. Yeah, and that's, that's why. I that's mean, like it's, the only part you, that you, kind you, of you make like, eh. you make up your own story with it. You know, and depending on how deep you think into it, you might think, okay, that's okay, or or you, you think, okay, that really sucks. I will say this too about that movie. I think besides Jason, my favorite character from every single Jason movie was in Part Five, and it was Reckless Reggie. Oh yeah, he was hilarious. Yep. And that, that kid was just, and the, the the part that always makes me think, and this was so black of him to do this, <laughs> when he seen, well, it wasn't Jason, but they, everybody thought it was Jason. When he seen Jason, he was with the the one lady, and he screamed, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and he just turned. High, the high-pitched you know, scream. That wasn't the part, though. The black part is when he screamed, and he turned, he just took off. Like, he didn't think about it. He didn't, he just ran, just. It was they, like he was gliding. But, you know, they open up the, the door, body falls out, he ain't phased. You know, Im, you know, imposter Jason pops up. That's what gets him yep. to scream and take off. And he, yeah. I would have bolted the second I saw that body fall out. But I guess if you've already seen the carnage, he already did. You yeah, know, exactly. With the, you know, the body, you know, the room of bodies. I guess, the, you know, seeing another one didn't really phase him. But uh, we can kind of, I mean, we don't have to have a lot of, Hills have eyes, like I said. We could talk about what you remember and stuff. Dive yeah, into it's that like, one. you know, we can, I uh, said, it's not like, I don't think it's, you know, it's it's a good, I think we've, you know, me and you both appreciate the films, but I don't think it's like our absolute favorite. Like, time. if you want to talk Friday the 13th, you want to talk Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I mean, we'll go on forever with or that. Candyman or whatever. Yep. But I'll say, from the Hills have eyes, I'm not sure what year it was. I believe the remake came out in 06. I think so. I want to say, like but. That. If I'm not mistaken, I could have sworn I seen that movie in the drive-ins. First time I seen it, I don't know why I did. I hated it, like I absolutely hated it, and I didn't see it for like another 10, 20 years. I just recently watched it last year with my wife. We watched that one. We watched the original, and I think we watched the sequels. Yep, the sequels were terrible, by the way. Oh yeah, the and, sequels uh, to both films. Were Flex absolutely. Washington. He's not a bad actor, <laughs> but he had no business oh being in that God, movie. I hated him in that movie. <laughs> Sergeant Flex. Oh, he, was man. The worst. he had no business being in that movie. <laughs> now, I know it's from one of the remakes. I don't know if it's from the first one or if it's from the second one. But one of my favorite kills in that movie is I don't even know what you call these people that live in this. Because it wasn't like a military base. Like a, they were doing like testing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It was like radiation. They were doing yeah. bombing and. 
the that was in the remake. The that was in the remake. That was okay. in the remake. The, the original is much, it, the story is different. Yeah, mean, the, we'll get into that shortly. But um, with the remake, there was one kill where the guy, well, you know, one of the the people that live there. I don't know what you. I don't know what mutants. We're gonna, call, we're, we're gonna call these. We're gonna call them hill people. Yeah, hill one people. of the hill people. <laughs> yeah, mutants, hill people. Whatever. They live there. And uh, they were up in the mountains or whatever. And one of the kills, like, I don't know if the guy fell off the cliff or, like, trying to, you know, reach back to climb up. But anyway, the dude cut his arm off. Yeah, he's, he's climbing down. And the guy comes, he's, like, right down a hole. And he's, like... Oh, he grabs him. Or he grabs slices, him and, you know, Holds him out, cuts slices off his, his arm. arms off. But the funniest part, yo, is after he... When he's falling like this, like, falling off the thing, for people who are listening to the podcast, and, yes, I was really, like, acting like I was falling. You can't see me, but... When he grabbed the dude's arm that he caught, it was these wavered. I was rolling. <laughs> oh, that's some disrespectful shit. Yeah, was like, that from know, the? It's was that insult part- injury? It's part two of the remake. Okay, it's, yeah. You know yeah. what it was with part two is, I think they tried too hard to make it kind of like, instead of making it like the first one, how the first one was like a serious movie, it was like kind of dark. They tried to put it, make it a little bit lighter, and they tried to make a little comedy with it. Not saying you can't have comedy in horror. But it just didn't. Maybe it was the wrong cast. Maybe it was a bad script. But it just it didn't work with that one. No, and you know it's another thing. They tried to they tried to take multi elements from from both from the original film and and push it into two films when they remade it. Okay, because that's a huge difference from the original to the remake. Is the original had the whole fam damnly, as my father would say. <laughs> In the in the original film, you know, you got your mother, you got your father, you got all the you got all this, you know, the offspring, and you didn't have that in the remake, the first remake. You had just a bunch of you know hill a people. bunch of hill people, a bunch of mutated people, and then when you go to the re, then when you go to the se- sequel to the to the original film, you have. You find out how they're breeding them, and it's not one woman. It's, you know, they that's one of the things, you know, when they kidnap families, kill everybody but, you know, but the women, you know, and get them to punch out a few kids, and then when they're done with them, kill them and go on to the next one. And then you had, like, you know, the, you know, I said they didn't even, they barely spoke. You know, they were so mutated in the remakes, yeah. they barely spoke. They, per, they spoke true. perfect English in the, in the original, but the remake, they could barely speak. It was just, you know, grunting pretty much. And that's, but you can hear one of them who doesn't really talk that much in the sequel, you know, sit, call one of them, you know, father, you know, before he gets, you know, freaking <clears throat> backhanded, you know, <laughs> goes two feet across, across the oh, air for shit. running out so he can get to his business of, you know, making another, you know, another mutated baby. That is true with the, um, now that you mention it, I, like I said, I vaguely remember, I watched the, re- the original earlier this week. But they were they were pretty intelligent in the original one, right? Remember they had the walkie talkies and they had all the that. The walkie talkies they can they can talk. They all yeah. That one I can't think of his name. It's killing me. I can't remember the actor's name. But he's always he naturally looks you know a little 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 odd. And he's played the bald one, right? Bald guy, and <laughs> yeah. he's he's and he's and he totally respects. It. He's played in multiple films that you know. Yeah. That you know he's the freak. Yeah. That that you know betray, that betrays that. So and he's yep. and he's been said you know he's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Too, but he's you know he already kind of looked a little different, and but you can tell there was some makeup applied to the others. But like I said, all of yeah. them, they, like when I when I picked up again back to you know things people here aren't going to understand, you know, <clears throat> VHSs at the video store. <laughs> when I picked it up, <laughs> you know, and looked at looked at turn it around and looking at it after I'd already seen the remake, I'm looking at the original film, and there's it's a it's a still of the scene from the when they when they invade the camper and it's one of the it's one of the it's one of the brothers on you know holding down one of the, you know one of his victims trying to keep her quiet and i'm looking at that and I'm like huh that must that must be the family and you know, that must be you know the family is being abducted because you know there's you know and he's probably trying to protect his you know his wife or his sister or whatever they didn't look they didn't look like they were mutants at all so i yeah. was totally thrown off by that that no that's like the bad guy trying to hold you know <laughs> Keep her quiet, you know, while he's, you know, while, you know, everybody else is out doing their thing and nobody's, you know, <clears throat> warning everybody outside, you know, these bastards have, you know, are in our camper. Yeah. Those, mo- like, those movies, again, looking back at them later on, I was like, they're, they weren't bad at all. 
the see I don't remember watching I know I watched it, I just don't remember the sequels really from the originals. But the sequel from the remake, whoever made that should be slapped like six times. Oh yeah. <laughs> Cause that yeah. was just like I love I love horror. I love remakes, I love sequels, but I hate when people try to do too much. Wait, they like I feel like like I said, they did too much. I tried to make it too funny. Yeah, yeah. Helicopters coming in. Yeah. Dry yeah. dry jokes. I can appreciate that's, dry humor. I, I think that's what I think that's what killed us. It was the dry jokes, the dry humor. Like I didn't mind the helicopters coming in to an extent because it was like a you know, like a old military base or whatever where they were doing testing and stuff. But I just feel I don't know, I just But I feel as if like once you incorporate Comedy into a horror movie is no longer a horror movie. I it's more so a comedy. It's a, it yeah. becomes a dark comedy. You, you, know, you can't really combine the two elements. It throws it off. Like I feel like the first, like the first remake, mm-hmm. I watched it. Like there was like a sense of fear. Like even in that yeah. one, like they were a little like witty and obnoxious. Like they had their little joking moments, but it was more so like fear based. Like the second one, like what it was on, too like, much. Flex Washington. That's pr- you know what it is too. I feel. Now, this could be just me, but with with horror movies, I'd rather have actors, like, I'm not saying we're no-names, but say if we were actors. We're like, we'd be like no-name actors in a horror movie than, like, big-name actors because nine times out of ten, you know that big-name actor is going to survive. And yeah. it's going to be something that they're going to be comfortable with versus, like, say, again, like, no-name actors. Like, Kevin Bacon, he was in the first Jason, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Yeah, he was. He was a no name then. Friday the Thirteenth. That wasn't. That, that was. That was pre Jason as well. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Nobody had an idea who Kevin he Bacon got killed was in the, the bed. But I'm saying yeah, though, like one of the most great, one of the best kills you've ever seen in the series too. When I what I'm getting at though is like you ex- like when you see like again Halloween H two O. LL Cool J was in there. Yep. He didn't get killed. Nope. Buster Rhymes in Halloween Resurrection. He stay alive. <laughs> oh my gosh! Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> He that, was. <laughs> that was the worst Halloween movie was, ever, by the I way. I mean, some people... Oh, no, but, um, Rod Digger died in 13 well, Ghosts, right? Wow, that's a good question. Yeah, I don't I remember. Sure she died. 13 Ghosts, 13 Ghosts. 13 Ghosts, it was like a glass house. And, like, I remember it. room was like... Um, Matthew, Matthew Lillard, Lillard, Lillard was, was in, in that. that. Yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, was, he played Scooby. He was in the Scream movies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he survive? No. Did anybody was. survive? I think Tony Shalhoub... Uh, that's how you say it, and one of and the kids did. That wasn't a bad movie, by the way. It was. Yeah, it, was yeah, it was pretty good. You know, it was. It was pretty creative. Good creative effects. spin. Yeah. You know. Right. I mean, I know the movie's probably like over ten years old now, but even yeah. so, movies, horror movies were really oh, yeah, getting that. dull, and you know, getting remade too much, and coming out with poor, you know, qual, you know, poor movies at that point. So when you see a good film come out, you know, then yeah, you like you do today, it. you really. <laughs> Take you know, take it in, and you know, like yeah, that was really good. That was pretty original. I know I mentioned this in the last pod- last podcast I did with Henry, first episode, but um, because I want to get your guys' take on this. Me personally, when it comes to horror movies, I love, I really love the special effects. CGI is good to an extent, but I feel like they overdo it with CGI. Like back in the day, they didn't mm-hmm. have all this technology, so they had to think outside the box. Like again, with the Kevin Bacon kill. Right. When he was stabbed through the bed and you figure out just like a it was like a bag of fake blood or whatever. Yeah, and his his head, you know, he's under the bed. Yeah, he's but he's, his uh, head is just sticking out from yep. it and it's perfectly sitting on this, you know, prosthetic neck and rest of the well, probably I think his neck was his, but like his from the chest down was all prosthetic and Yeah. Which that's cool. That's freaking amazing, especially for that was like eighties. Yeah, it was nineteen eighty. That film came out, so it was even so it was made in the seventies. So then you go from that to you get the CGI with the they overdo it with the blood and just Right. Not that I some of the effects. Yeah, I don't mind it to an extent, but it it doesn't work for every single movie. And I feel like for like a especially for like a a really good good slasher, it might work more for like a, a paranormal type of movie, but for like a really good slasher I feel like the CGI just it over it almost makes it look fake or too car- not that the movies are real obviously but it makes it yeah. look like too cartoony. It turns into an um, Xbox One scene. There you go. <laughs> there you go. It's like a little video game or something. Like the opening to every video game. You know you have like a little brief like yep. seven minutes <laughs> of cinematography. And that's what it happens. Yeah. That's the problem. You know, back to, you know the movie we were talking about. You know the movies I should say. The Hills Have Eyes. It's the scene that they really tried to, you know, go, you know, real deep with in both films, you know, the original. 
if there was no real good effects, so you had to work with what you had. And too much CGI in the set in the in the remake was when the when they burned the father alive. It's like that was good. You know, it was. I mean, you could you know the the you know the original. I mean, they didn't they didn't show a ton of it. I mean, like one good spray with the extinguisher, you know, and they they get him all the way out. And the remake, not so much, but you can tell the CGI was way in there. You can like yeah. okay, you can tell you know. Where he, where the actor is, and where, you know, where the fake <laughs> flames are. <laughs> Two totally different things. <laughs> but honestly, though, another thing we got to take into consideration is that we're almost desensitized yeah. to certain things. To the, with the horror stuff? So it's, right. that's the reason why now, like, I watch a lot of original films, and I wonder, like, how can they really be afraid of these types of things? But that's because that was, like, the most they were exposed to. Like, yo, one that's of the... True. Like one of the trashest horror films I've ever seen. Have you ever heard of the car? The car. I... The car. It's just it's just a car with nobody in it, and it just hits people. <laughs> and it just appears the car. Oh my god, you have to watch it. But like this was like a hit, like back back in the day really? when it came out. Like it was black and white. But I feel like now we're so because we've seen it all. Because I remember watching Freddy Krueger. Like mm -hmm. I would watch it and I would be traumatized. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to go to sleep. Or if I do sleep, the blanket had to be over my over head. Because something about that blanket <laughs> kept that your... any monsters or ghouls or goblins or sharp knives or anything. Nothing can get through that blanket that's funny. when it was over my head. That it's, is hilarious yeah, that you know? say that. Because that, that's like the <laughs> definition of a security blanket. I don't know what it was because yes. we've all been there. You get scared. Oh, my. When you throw that blanket over your head, <laughs> and gonna, nothing gets to you. I'm going to just throw this out there. We're all in our 30s, early. He just Happy birthday. You just turned 30 yes, recently. Yes, yes, yes. But days. Uh, Four days into it. We've all been spanked before. Oh, yeah. And for course. some strange reason, we think we can go upstairs, run into bed, <laughs> hide under that blanket. Like it's gonna She's not going to see you, right? <laughs> you just going to yep. disappear. It's an alternate universe. That, and the reason why this can tie into horror is because when you watch a horror movie, you see people running upstairs, hiding under the bed and stuff. And it's like, when you're scared, like, that's a horror movie. Your mom chased you with that damn belt or whatever she has. Yep. You run upstairs, you hide under the bed. Like, she can't find you. <laughs> It's really? like a classic movie scene. You're under the bed and you're seeing the slow, the the slow creeping feet. Then they stop right at you. Yep. And, and they you turn, think you're, you're, it's over. And they turn around. Walking. Yep. Then, then you, you think slide it's okay. out. Then they grab it. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's like the classic, the classic oh, horror man, film Oh, man, it's hilarious, scene. though, yo. But you said the car? Yeah, the car. The car. Oh, my God. The, I oh, think what we're going to have to do, we're going to have to get us this trio right here together. We're going to have to all watch that movie. If you guys don't mind, find yeah, it on YouTube or whatever. Find it. And we're going to have to discuss it. Cause yeah, definitely. Because nowadays, like, even think of, um, <laughs> uh, when did the remake for the um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre come out? That was, like, 2002, 2003? Uh, 2003. <clears throat> yeah, 2003. First, first remake came I remember out. the one scene, it's like the boyfriend, I think he, um, he was running. I mean, he was running through the sheets. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, Leatherface, like, maneuvered through the sheets. And then he cut his leg off. <laughs> But, like, the graphics on that, like, it looks so real. Yeah, like, yeah. you can see, like, the ligaments dangling, that's how dangling they, in the flesh. And this was 2003. This was, like, almost 15 years ago. Damn. So I feel right. like 15 years later, like, we've seen all of this stuff. 15, so it's like, how much realer can you get than the actual artery hanging yeah, out of the skin? It's like, when you, when you do it like that, like, you know, just, just a close-up of that scene, you can do it so much better. Like, Hostel, when that came out, you know, the scene where the, one of the oh, kids yeah, is yeah, in the yeah, room right. and... It, Guy, you know, like, you know, that guy tells you, he sets him free, you know, like, he, he leans down out, out of the camera, and the guy starts screaming, I have no idea what he's doing, and then he un unchains it, and says, okay, you're free to go, and then he goes to stand up, it's just a close-up of his, of his Achilles, both his Achilles heels are cut wide open when he stands, and it opens yeah. up, and you feel that, I don't care how many times you watch That's it, awesome. but you feel that, awesome. but it's like, but then you watch behind the scenes, and it's just two prosthetic legs that, you know, it's when that scene's filmed, and somebody just pushes on them, so they kind of open up. And then, then it cuts right back to the kid falling over. So yeah, it's I like, like kind of, so you, cool. when you do it up close, like Texas Chainsaw and Hostel, you can get better effects. And you don't, you know, and you can do it real inexpensively too, because I'm not sure how much Texas Chainsaw was budgeted, but Hostel got like almost no budget and, you know, did a. Tom, I mean, Tom Savani didn't work on the film, but they almost did like a Tom Savani type. And he's. Type amazing. skills, you know. You don't have much to work with, but, you know, you, but you make it work. You know, you find ways to, you know, bring a real, you know, some real creepy and, you know, some real realistic, you know, looking scenes, you know, to film when you don't have, you know, much money to play with. 
I got a question for both of you guys. <clears throat> and I'll even start it off. I did it on my last podcast episode. Um, I'll give, and I'm going to ask you the question. I'm going to let you guys think about it as I answer it. What movie scared you as a child, if any, that you can really remember? Oh, I know this answer, but go ahead. <laughs> Mine was, um, remember the Creep Show movies? Yep. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It was, yes. I can't remember if it was part one or part two, but it was The Hitchhiker, where the um, the white lady, she's... And she hit him, he had the bloody face? Yes, yes. Oh, my and when God. She hit, she hit the dude, he's going to Dover. I'm going to have a nightmare tonight. <laughs> and he's, Damn. you know, he she hits him, he goes in the windshield. She's driving around, whatever. He's like, thanks for the ride, lady. A bloody face. I'm thanks no for the face. ride. As he's, you know, she's driving around. She crashes and stuff. And I'm not going to get too deep into it, but you guys have seen it. That one, for some reason, I was watching it with my older brother, Zach. That was the scariest one out of all of them. And my cousin, Jerome and Gisela, I believe. And when I seen that, you know, they're all older than me. They got me by like seven or eight years. But I didn't want to show them I was scared. But when I had to go upstairs and take a pee, yo, like, I was like, because someone come upstairs. <laughs> I was scared as hell to go up. Like, I was terrified. That I had to have the, the lights on. You pissing and missing the toilet because you looking back and shit. It was all types that of shit. That like, scared the crap out man. of me. And then, like, I've obviously I've watched it more recently. I've, I just watched it again last year. I know I watched it before then. I'm watching the movie. It was still cool. But I was just laughing. Like, what the hell was so scary about this? <laughs> like, why was I so scared of this? But as a kid... You know, I was I was probably like, I couldn't. I was younger than ten. I had to be like seven or eight, maybe even younger than that. But that scared the shit out of me, almost literally. That's how scary that movie oh, was. No doubt. So what was what was yours? I say it wasn't it wasn't creep show, but but regarding that fan, it was the original. The what the thing I saw that movie when I was like in my twenties, my late twenties, and the box got me. Like that freaking that freaking uh, it's like a. I don't know, it was like a demonic chinchilla or something. I'm not sure what, but the, the teeth on that thing, because, you know, my only real phobia is like, is like, you know, great white sharks, like when their mouths are wide open. Oh, They're wow. seeing the big, you know, teeth. teeth. And, and, ju- and just the creature itself, the way it moved, too. The way they made it move was just creepy as hell. But, but, at, but I just want to, you know, put that out there. That's, that's the story from Creepshow that scared, the, you know, that's scared awesome. me, but it was, I was much older, of course. But the film that got me as a child was back to the, what I was talking about, you know, and sneaking into, you know, sneaking into the room, you know, the room with the older mm-hmm. kids. And they watched the original Pet Cemetery, and I came in, you know, when, when the kid Gage had, you know, had resurrected after his father buried him, and where he, where he freaking kills Herman Munster. <laughs> um, can't think of the guy's name who the actor was, but that's how I always call him because that's just his most iconic role ever. Like where it's like you know he's he's you know he's like leans down to look under the bed, then the cat you know the possessed cat you know shows up, and distracts him so he's not paying attention when that freaking scalpel, little hand with the holding the scalpel comes out and goes right for his right for his Achilles heel, and then you know he freaking you know get he's you know he screams in agony you know exactly what happened they didn't show it, either the lack of you know effects or you know just the fact you can't do stuff like that back then, but. And yeah, and this that, and then the kid comes out and then like bites his neck, and then like where, you know, the his father comes in, you know, trying to find his, trying to find his wife, and his son, because he know he knows what he has to do. He knows it's it's unfortunate and inevitable, but he realizes now that you know anything anything or anybody you bury there, they're not coming back as who they were. So it's just inevitable to put them right back where they came from. That and was a good movie. It too. was. I mean, it's. But yeah, that day and that that movie scared me half to death. And you know, like I said, there was a long. It seemed like a long hallway at my aunt's old house to get to the bathroom. So I was doing the same thing, like, really just. And there's no light either. It was like there's no light switch turn. You know, turn. I had to walk through a dark hallway. I'm just like booking it as fast as I can. Just just waiting. You know, it's like standing at the, you know, the edge of the edge of the entrance. Like, okay, I'm gonna go now. All right, still not ready. Okay, really gotta be. Okay, it, it's it's go now or or lose it right here. Yep. So, so you know, I just bolt it, you know, in there, turn on the light immediately, close the door, you know. And then I was like in my cousin's, you know, my cousin's room, you know, fishing through his toys, and like I heard something, something approaching the door, and I'm, 
scared the I just shit grabbed, I just grabbed the first thing I could find, like this freaking, like this freaking doll that almost looked like an oversized Chucky doll, except it wasn't, <laughs> except it wasn't red haired. I just grabbed, you know, just, just, I'll put, you know, got by my bed, just ready to, ready to swing. And it just, you know, my aunt's dog. <laughs> hightail it out of there quick. That's funny. But, yeah. So you, that's about, definitely something that got me. What about you, Chris? I know you were saying Candyman, but like um, what? Um, Candyman was a good one, but that's probably not the one that had me the most frightened. Let me see. I would have to say, oh, I got it. Two words for you. Tales from the hood. Oh. <laughs> and I know it's not more than two. And I know it's more than two words. <laughs> But yeah, yo, tales from the hood, like those those stories, like each story just hits the wall. But the but the scariest one was the puppies. The, the little puppies, yeah, yeah. yeah, oh man, those were the scariest. <laughs> like to be honest, like everything about that movie, like even that dude's gap, the gap in his teeth. Damn. The whole time he was telling the stories, like his haircut. His haircut was scary. This like guy. everything about that film was scary, like. You know? Yeah. I definitely Tales from the Hood was it. You know, um they had the one um um short film on with a little boy that was being abused, remember, and he drew the picture of the monster you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? That shit just you know, like like all the ass whippings that we all used to get, like it just like brought us brought us back flashbacks and shit, you know, it startled me, you know, while I was watching it. You know, like but yeah, the Tales from the Hood was definitely a scary one. You know, he turned into the devil, you know, everybody praised Lucifer. You know, at the end of the movie and shit, but yeah, you know. That that was, I just watched that movie, I want to say two or three years ago. And I was watching it with my boy. Actually, we went to Scaricon. We stayed out there, you know, drinking, smoking a little bit, watched that movie. Yo, yep. I've never, I mean, as a kid, it was probably different, but I've never laughed so hard in my life. I was laughing through the whole movie. Like, I don't <laughs> even really remember the, I remember bits and pieces. I remember one part of the movie. I don't know if they were in the back of a cop car. I don't know how this comment came up, but uh, there's two people in the back of a car, a cop car, whatever. I don't know what the guy asked him, but right after he said that to him, he said, what do you got, a green dick? And I was rolling. I was like, what? The, what? what? <laughs> that had me rolling. And there was another part in the movie later on where uh, those little dolls... I think it was a little dolls running around. There was some yeah. old white dude who was getting pissed off about him. He was like, you little nigglets. I <laughs> lost my damn shit. You remember that shit? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he was like I the lost, politician's assistant. I lost my mind. Like that. I, don't, I think that story was based back in, way back in the day, like almost the 1800s, back when, you know, you know, there was. It was no, 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 actually. Um, was it? I mean, it was more so, it was a little more modern, but the original story of the house. Okay, you know, like yeah. During the 1800s, okay, the old lady. I think the old lady like, had was, the puppet, you know, was, so she had the the children or something like that. Yeah, it was, it, it was like, it was almost, it was almost like a political story without, yeah, being, without uh-huh. overdoing it. You know, uh-huh, it was exactly. still very well done. And, you know, and the, those who, you know, had been victims for years yeah. finally got, ju- you know, got justice. Donald Trump's um, brother, David. David Trump, <laughs> you know, he was running for um, city council. <laughs> okay, I got it. I, I got another one for you guys. What's that? Uh, you already answered this, but I'll ask you both anyway. This one I got to think of, so you guys are going to take it on this one. What's the worst horror movie you guys ever seen? Like, one movie you put in, let's say the worst horror movie you ever seen, and you actually finished it. Not one, because I watched one and I stopped it, but let's say one that you put in and you finished it yeah that's that's a that's, good, that's that's a tough one for me that is, that is really tough and i mean i mean does it have to be an original film it could be because you, you can always cheat you know and say a sequel it, <laughs> no, no it doesn't have to be an original any this is uh, any like, horror can, film ever ow. i gotta say the one that really really comes to mind it's probably not the worst film ever but i gotta say like you know the last the last Saw movie before the one that just... I don't know when the hell that's even coming out. Like, I know right. it already hit theaters. I just know when it's coming to video. Oh, okay. But Saw 7, Saw 3D, you know, I mean, that... It had just, like, one of the worst, you know, one of the worst endings I've ever seen in a film. And not, and not like, you know, the last scene, because the last scene was pretty... Oh, I didn't see that coming. But, you know, for this, those who don't know what I'm talking about or need a refresher on the film... You know, it had the one guy who is a, what you call it, a, uh, 
like a let's say what's like a like a self not a self help but like a motivational speaker because he's survived you know saw you know saw his traps and he's got the scars on his chest to prove it and he even had the story about what his oh, final yeah, test was uh, yeah, it comes yeah. turns out he's a big fat liar who you know made millions on writing a book and becoming you know a overnight success and holds like you know does like you know conventions and you know and like you know like self help groups of people who've also survived and you know and then he's he's caught and he's put he's put through real tests and of course most people that you know are victims in it that he's trying to save are people that knew you know that worked that worked for him and most of them knew that he was full of it but he's trying to but his wife is you know, is at the end of the maze, and you don't know what's, you know, where, you know, what's, you know, she's chained down every time, you know, another, another, you know, you know, mission fails for him, you know, like, the chain keeps lowering, almost bringing her down to the ground, so you don't know what's going to happen, but he's almost able to complete, you know, the task that, to save her, and last second he fails, and time runs out, and she has no clue. If she was in on it, I can understand a little bit better, but she was completely clueless. That's why she's so, what the hell is going on here? Why is this Why is this happening to us? You know, you already passed your test. Why is this happening again? But then he confesses, no, I'm a big fat liar. And then not only is she dies, but she's freaking trapped in that thing and burns, slowly burns alive. It's like, really? That was just, that was just really bad to me. You know, it's like, come on, it's, you know... It's like I say, you know, I know, I know innocent people die in horror movies all the time, but that was just a real bad way to go, especially for somebody who, you know, just little turn of the turn of the script, you know, could have easily, you know, she could have like known he was a liar and helped, you know, and help, you know, help spread his lies. So not that that's you deserve to be burned alive for that, but in the world of horror and the world of saw. Yeah, you kind of do, <laughs> but and in the world of you know, fake of you know fake movies, of course, but but yeah, that that, that just really didn't sit well with me, and I've always kind of been disappointed, you know, and that's kind of how they ended, you know, the, what they did with the last movie, you know, because they were already starting to decline a little bit. I thought six resurrected the story a little bit, but but I thought you know they could have gone out with a bang, and you brought in real real good actor and Sean Patrick Flannery to be the main the main <clears throat> lead in the film and it just seemed they just kinda just kinda sunk that ship. Yeah. So um for me let me see the worst oh, the, oh, oh my god the, oh shit it came to me. I have one word for you. Oh shit. Leprechaun in the hood. Oh <laughs> my goodness. Oh my god back the movie. in the hood or back to the hood? Which one? Because there was two. Oh, was it back to the hood? Oh, my God. There was two. There was back two. To the there was two. He, he didn't have enough? They had Yo, a shit. He had fell in love with a hooker, man. Uh -huh. He was... Oh, my God. He was smoking weed. Oh, my gosh. That was, and that was hilarious. He how do you, was how do you, gang banging. The shit was like you, Grand Theft Auto <laughs> meets fucking <laughs> Leprechaun in the Hood meets a, a corny ass BT comedy low budget yes, movie. Yes. It was that, like... That, oh yo, you God. saying that? Because I just watched this movie earlier this year, that movie. And you saying that reminds me of those cheesy BET movies. Yes. Oh, my God. The, oh, and the, who was the actor? The, the, um, there was a heavy set actor. He was light skinned. Had like, I think he had a gap. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I forgot the name. Though. Oh, my God. Man, there's I, so many. I wish Look, I could remember the quotes. To me movie. personally, you can't bring a horror film to the hood. You can't. The hood, they're used to killing and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not scared of killing and getting their shit chopped off. They're scared of getting their lights cut off. <laughs> That's what they're scared of. You know what I'm saying? They're scared of shit like that. They're afraid of bill collectors. They're not afraid of Jason. You see what I'm saying? That's why you see nobody in the hood was afraid of Candyman. They knew that motherfucker. Like he passed. Oh, yeah, but Uncle Candyman? Yeah, 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 he always around. They say his name five times, he pop up. You know, you can't do that. So I feel once, because... Because Leprechaun was actually a scary movie. Yeah, it was. Until he got to the hood. And the hood turned him out. They had, they had him smoking sour. You see, like, Kush. How do you, how do you kill somebody with a bong? Watch, yeah, watch yeah. Leprechaun oh, back to the hood and God. find out. Like I said, sometimes like when you mesh too much comedy in a horror film, it defeats the purpose. 
You know, because it's not enough comedy to be a comedy, but the comedy is overpowering the horror. But yeah, that was definitely a film. His makeup was horrible. That big pimple on his nose was horrible. <laughs> Everything about it, like the whole setup of the film. Even Ice D couldn't save it. That was definitely. <laughs> God, he was in that movie. Yep. I forgot I Ice D was in that I movie. Saw, I saw I saw in the hood twice. Once again, about a year or so ago, I haven't seen Back to the Hood a second time. But I remember when I watched In the Hood, I always thought Ice T was, you know, was only had like only was only in the opening like the opening act. But no, his partner that they when they go in they find you know the leprechaun you know in stone and remove the necklace from him and brings it back to life. His partner doesn't get it. And again, how the hell do you kill somebody with a with like a you know with like a comb? Again, yeah, well, watch Leprechaun in the Hood, <laughs> but but yeah, like but well, I, I, I see Bra- you know get gets out and then he becomes he he takes the gold necklace becomes like a overnight success and then it's like these three kids come and I think they steal it from him, then he's hot on their trail so they got the Leprechaun after them because now they got his you know his medallion and Ice T's hot on their trail because they stole it from him. That so that <laughs> that was a. That was a great pick. That was a terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he 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 actually dug into a really bad, really bad film. I just find a film that I think some people, some people like it, some people hate it. But I just I was just disappointed in, you know, in it in itself, like just especially how it ended. Like when you talk about bad, poor quality films, I mean, man, I've seen so many. It's like it's just hard to pinpoint one. I try seen... to think of what it is, you know, which which one really I see stands the... out. I see been a halfway crooked cop for the last 30, 35 years. <laughs> he's been acting. He's been a halfway crooked cop. He's been the same role. Like, there's just certain actors that are the same person in every Everything. movie. Yep. Terry Crews is the same person in every movie. Denzel Washington. It doesn't matter if he's trying to save his son, if he's a drug dealer, if he's a motherfucking fugitive on a run, he is the same exact person in every single film. And I hope they keep those actors out of horror movies, please. Yes, right. please. Uh, like don't, straight don't straight on horror. I mean, like, you know, suspense films have some, that have some scare tactics to it that some people would justify, you know, would try to argue a case as a horror film. That's one thing, but I mean, a straight on horror film. Like, yeah, don't. Oh, but mean, you know what? I'm still pushing for Kevin Bacon as Freddy Krueger if they remake it, if they make another Friday that, or another night. I think that would, could work. I really I do think too. that could work. I mean, you're not going to get Robert Englund to do it again. And like I said, that's what's so unique about Freddy Krueger. It's why when they tried changing him up, it failed miserably is because he's one of the few actors or one of the few characters that has a series and has a voice. You know, Michael, Jason, Leatherface. They're all, you know, they're all mute. Yeah, they don't say right. a word. They hide behind a mask. So, you know, if, you know, the even though... The scariest person, the scariest person in a horror film ever had one of the scariest voices ever. And we all know who that is. The old lady from Poltergeist. The old lady oh, from wow. Poltergeist <laughs> had the scariest, she was the scariest character in that whole film. The scariest character, but yeah, man, like that's what it's about, a voice. That voice will really set you off. Okay. I got two movies for you guys on this horrible horror thing. What's that? I'm going to start off with the Easter Bunny Bloodbath. Now, I don't know if it's on YouTube. I know I've seen it on the Fire Stick. I'm just going by a brief kind of what I remember from it. This Obviously, it's based around Easter, and this kid opens the front door. Or whatever. Or his sister opens the door, and there's somebody in Easter Bunny costume just chops his sister's head off in the beginning of the movie. That's how the movie starts. So you're thinking, okay, cool. This is this this movie's gonna start. You know, it's starting out kind of gory, starting out kind of cool. What's going on? So um, later on in the movie, I guess he's always having the. I, if I remember correctly, I think he's always having like these visions or these quote unquote dreams, like a flashbacks of that. And so him and his friends, they go to a like a house in the woods or whatever, like a house on a lake, one of those type of deals. And he's still seeing this Easter Bunny killing people, just like randomly killing people that are around in this area. Make a long story short, come to find out. Well, before I say that, through this whole movie, there's some shitty music playing here and there, or especially when the bunny's around, which it ruined it for me, that right <laughs> there. 
And then later on in the movie, you find out that he's the Easter Bunny killing everybody. How? I have no idea. But at the end of the movie, somebody killed. Like I said, I'm not getting into this too deep because I don't remember it too well. It was that bad. But at the end of the movie, somebody kills him. I don't know if they shoot him or stab him. But he's bleeding or whatever. And he, they take the, the mask off his head. And it's this. it's him. And it was one of those low-budget horror movies, which I don't mind those, because sometimes they can be really good, sometimes they can be really bad. This one was, like, really bad. I I don't recommend it, but I think you should see it. I yeah. know that's, like, a, I'm contradicting myself there, but it's, like, one of those ones where it's just, like, you watch it, you're like, I could have did better making this movie. Oh, yeah. Like, what was this budget? Yeah, it's like, even if you don't have a budget, you know, it's like, I, mean, I just don't, sometimes I just question, like, you know, what what, in, what inspires people you know, to make these films, like, you know, people that produce them, people that direct them, people that star in them, you know, like, what, you know, I mean, you don't have, you don't have, like, you know, George Clooney's of the world. It was... Like, if you want to... I've never seen the film, but, like, he was in some old, cheesy B-movie horror flick years ago, and now he's, like, one of the most recognized actors in the world. I... All right, so I think this movie was made in the 2000s. So I res- I understand it more if it's like a, I'll say a 90s, even an early 80s, from 90s and back. But once you get into this era more, early 2000s and later, I don't remember what it was made in. That's not, uh, I, I want to block that movie out, but it was bad. <laughs> and then my second movie was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D. Oh, word. And oh, my gosh. So. I feel like that, I went and seen it in theaters, and I wish I didn't. Same here. I did too, and I was so disappointed. And I feel like that movie got so much hype. One, because it was in 3D, and two, because Trey Songs was in it. And yep. what pissed me off about the movie, I don't care that he died. That's cool. He died in a car accident. And I know. He crashed in the van. You, there are multiple people who just died, you know, just random random acts of, you know, complete, you know. Dumb shit. Like, dumb I'm stuff like, that, that has no part in a horror movie. Especially that could have happened in a that could happen in a, a romantic comedy. That could happen in a love story. But it had to, like I'm like, if you're gonna die in a horror movie with a icon like Leatherface, Jason, etc., you should be dying by getting killed by one of them. Right. Not by even if it's not by the cha- you know the legendary you know weapon of choice, the chainsaw, which happens a ton. I mean, like even the original, only one person died by the chainsaw. But like, what they were driving in the van? Didn't he like? Slice one of the tires or something. They're going around a turn and crash. Yeah, and boom, it, he's lo- dead. He lost control and he dies. I think the girl crawls out. I can't remember what happens to her, but something. Uh, that that killed it for me. The way he died, because I wanted to see him get cut up with a saw. Nothing against him, but I'm like, if you're going to be in this kind of movie, you need to go out like, you know. Right, if you're a recognizable person, you know, for acting or for other reasons, but you're suddenly in a movie. And you die you in a movie. Pretty, you you want to see a pretty legendary, you know. Kill, yeah, not kill. crashing. And then another one was... um. Towards the end, remember when the girl found out that that Leatherface was her cousin? Yep. She throws him the saw and says, yep. like, get him, cuz, or do, something. Do your thing, cuz. Oh, like, oh, my gosh. Why? The second that came out, I'm like, that did n- I did not just hear that. Please. And just <laughs> the way things. she says it and the way she just kind of, like I said, she throws the saw and I'm kind of, you know, looking all tough now. It's like, it, you were just, you were, you know, tied up by some, you know, some town folks. You know, who have another, you know, we find out or have a part, you know, from, from the original, like from earlier in the film. Yeah. From the earlier story they're telling. And, you know, and you're like seconds away from, you know, becoming, you know, the next victim of this, you know, of, you know, Leatherface until he somehow recognizes you and then sets you free. It's like, that's another thing. It's like, you know, to part, to the original part two, and it's, a, it's more like a dark comedy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was funny as hell. And, you know, he's like has the hots for a girl, you know, for for the DJ, which his brothers pick on him for. And then in part three, I didn't know this. You know, they don't make it super clear, but it's kind of been explained to like people who review it and you know, like look deeper into the movies or the production or whatever. That psycho, that, psy- that little psycho girl in the family is actually his daughter. Wow. You know. Leatherface? Yeah, yeah, Leatherface. He's you That's know cool. some 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 per, some victim they had apparently. You know, he, you know, raped her, and that kid was uh, was a product of it. And, and it's all a story. You know, people have kind of you know made up or just you know yeah. put together themselves. And but 
but yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, like she's sitting on his lap and, you know, she gives him a little kiss and everything. But, you know, the girl's, you know, an absolute whack job and she's like seven years old. So, of course, she's, you know, acts like that around her psychotic family. I'd never tied it in just watching that, that she was his daughter. That makes sense. So, okay, you know, so he's, he likes a girl in part two. He's got a daughter in part three. So these, you know, these, and it, and it works, you know, mm-hmm. these things work. But him being like, you know, but just how like, you know, not, not emotional, but like, uh, but like, um, that's fine. You know, like, like care, like caring and like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm so, I'm sorry. Let yeah. me untie you, you know, my bad. And like he interacts with, you know, a perfectly normal looking person, like everybody he interacts with in his family, you know, you can tell they're, you know, they're psychotic, you know, they look a little off, they act crazy, you know, they, they act crazy, they kill people, you know, it's like, you, you know, whose family in these, in these movies, her it, it just didn't work at all, at all. Pause. Pause. So, um, Chris just had to, he had to go, he had to take care of some stuff. It's just me and Rob left. We're going to keep going with this random horror chat. Um, and Chris actually came up with a great idea. I wish he was here to say it before he left, but he was saying, like, when we get together, if us three get together, if it's just me and one of, the, one of these two or me and Henry or whatever, is, um, Besides watching the movie, if we're going to review a movie, besides watching that movie at home during the week, you know, up to the podcast, we should all get together, hang out the day of the podcast, a couple hours before we actually record, watch the movie and review it right after. That way it's fresh in our minds. You could still use the notes that you took during the week if you took notes and then use the notes from that and just go, which I think is an excellent idea. And the movie that I have in mind right now, I just talked about it to Rob before I hit record again, was... um. Never Hike Alone. I'm going to discuss it with Chris, which I think he'll be cool with it. It's on YouTube. Fan-made film. Probably one of the best fan-made films I've ever seen. And, hey, we're going to go from there. So let's get back into this horror talk, Rob. Uh, I'm a man of my word. I forgot to give Chris his gift. <laughs> but for those of you who who participate on the podcast, you're guaranteed to get a random horror trinket. It could be... I gave Rob a nice pillow. I let him pick it out, but it's not always going to be that. It's going to be something random. I have to get more stock of stuff that I'm willing to give away. <laughs> right. Honestly, it's it's hard to you know get stuff. You know that's like okay, I'm willing to part with this. Like yeah. <laughs> but as far as my like collection collection, that's I'm letting everybody know right now. That's a no. That's a definite no. But the pillow I gave him was a nice ass pillow. It's nothing. It's not an ugly pillow. No, it's so. it's got all it's got all the classic characters. Seen, I've seen every single. I've seen all the movies here based on Freddy, <clears throat> Michael, Jason, Leatherface, Pinhead, Chucky, and that was, I don't know what the character from Trick or Treat is, but I have seen the film. His name is Sam. Sam, that's it. Yep. I was just about to ask you, did you see that movie? I did see it. And what did you I, think about that? To me, was um, you know what an anthology is before I say it, right? Yeah, an anthology. You know, for those of you who don't know, and I've learned this recently within the year. I also learned what um, trope is, the hor- like horror movie tropes. That's pretty much something that's always in movies, like a basic thing that's in movies. But uh, anyways, back to the anthology thing. That's an anthology, and I know I've said this before on live videos and probably on the podcast, the last episode, the first episode, is it's when, like, I'm saying horror. It's one movie, but there's, like, three little stories in the movie, like Creep Show, um... Tales from the Crypt, stuff like that. And the movie, the stories, the cool thing about it is the stories, they don't have to connect at all, or they can connect. And with Trick or Treat, they actually did connect, right. which I thought was awesome. But you didn't really figure that part out towards the end, till right. towards the end. You didn't, you didn't go into the film realizing that, and you know, and you're watching it, and you're not really, you're not really getting getting that vibe until, like I said, towards the end of the film. That, as a matter of fact. I don't even want to discuss... I want to talk random horror, but I don't want to discuss that film because that is also another really good film that we should Yeah, watch I haven't together. seen that one in a while, so I'll have to sit down with that one again. That would know, be a good one for get, us to get watch. Get a refresher together. On, and, um, like some things I remember really well about it, Other things I'm like not too familiar. Don't, don't remember a heck of a lot about. But yeah, but I do remember it was... 
it was a good it was it was a good film. That was yeah. And uh this is just a quick side note. Um my friend James just texted me, well actually before we started this podcast and on the page I remember it was like a week or two ago I put some something with Christmas trees on there. Like a little random post mm-hmm. where the skeleton was decorated and there was Christmas trees sitting yeah. around. I said it would be funny if there was a Christmas tree horror movie, and there actually is on YouTube. Oh, it's really? about 15 minutes. My friend watched it. He said it was hilarious. So I got to check it out. And I would love to do a little pod. It's only 15 minutes, and I'll get to. And um, I was thinking of doing a podcast on that, but I want to see it. He said it was funny, and I just I happened to post on YouTube or sorry on the page the other day, Horror Search 30 page, and I'm like. I got to do a movie or a little thing on this, but I'm thinking with those little, because you know how they have like, they have that, you know, the cryptic TV, Mm -hmm. how they have like little three minute movies. Yep. It would be fun to watch a few of those. Like say you watch one, you do a little notes on it, whatever, watch another one and just do those as one podcast, you know, watch say like 10 of them or whatever and do a little podcast on that, those little shorts, because Mm -hmm. some of those, the cryptic ones, I haven't seen them. I've just seen like bits and pieces, not even like a minute of any. But they actually look pretty good. They actually look like something that would make, um, like one full, you know, hour and a half, two hour movie. They, they look like they'd be, they can be really good movies with those little. Again, it's only a little three minute short, but still, like, I've seen three minute shorts and like, why the hell did I just, why, yeah. why did I just watch that? Like yep. that was, that three minutes, was a waste of time. And then I've seen a couple three minute shorts, not necessarily horror, just you know, random stuff. And it's like, oh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty. Like the um, which was even shorter actually than the three minute shorts. The Vine videos, people got real, real creative with some of those Vine videos. Hilarious. Yep. Not that that has anything to do with horror, but that's another thing I would like to do on this podcast is the cryptic stuff. I love the random horror chats because, as you can see with this one, we just go off on a tangent and just kind of discuss whatever comes to mind, and it just you don't have to stick to one movie or one horror subject so to speak, which I would love. We are going to do podcasts, which is just like just a certain movie, a specific movie and stuff. And we're going to do the idea that, again, that Chris said about watching the movie, just chilling, watching the movie together and going from there. But um, I'm trying to think of this real quick. You know what? I'm going to go right to this. I'm going to go right to the Scarecon talk. (laughs) <laughs> I discussed this a little bit last week, last time with Henry. We discussed it some. We've been to cons together before, and we also brought up Rob in our last con. He wasn't there to, he wasn't there to defend. Sorry, in our last podcast, he wasn't there to defend himself. And I did. We went to go meet Caroline Williams. Yep. Is that her name? Yep. And Rob was red as an <laughs> apple. And being the great friend that I am, <laughs> I had to point that out. And not quiet either. I was like, Henry, you know what's funny? When white people get, like, real, he was, like, excited. I don't know if, were you nervous a little bit? Oh, yeah. I was. Nervous. It was like, think of Santa Claus. Think of that red outfit he wears. That was Rob. That's (laughs) how red he got. But I pointed that out. I was like, Henry, you know, white people get real red when they uh, get real excited and nervous. And, you know, Rob called me a fucking asshole or called us both assholes, you know, (laughs) as we deserved. It was funny. But... I didn't get to really discuss that with him as far as recording it. Well, actually, I'm lying. I did. But uh, as I told you guys on the last podcast also, on the way there and the way back, I was recording on my little recorder thing, and I didn't do it right. I didn't save it. So we lost all that. That was going to be the, again, this is going to be the last time I'm going to discuss this. That was going to be the original first episode. Now let's get back into this. I'm going to talk to Rob about this. I'm going to ask him, Scarecon, because we met. At our old job, I'm not gonna just. I'm not gonna. I, my old job, you're still there. I'm not gonna even say the name of the job there. Right. But we would discuss horror. I told you about the con, and yep. we actually went. I told you about the con last year, right? Yeah. Because I think so. it had just passed, and we went this year. <clears throat> it was your first time going to a con. Scarecon, Turning Stone. What did you think? I thought it was excellent. I mean, <clears throat> I, you know, people that you had talked about that have been there before that you've met, and I'm like. That'd be cool, and like and Henry as well. When I started connecting with him, you know, <clears throat> on online, you know, and talking about like, you know, people I really, I really hope would be there, and you know, people I desperately want to meet. Like my top three people to meet all time were Bill Mosley from Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part Two, 
<clears throat> Devil's Rejects, or probably is, you know, a few most famous films. Caroline Williams, again, Texas Chainsaw, part two. Um, she was in, I think she, I did, she almost was unrecognizable in uh, Leprechaun 3. She was in Leprechaun 3? Yeah, she had, she was, I mean, I'm, I didn't even know it was her at first. Like, I'm like, God, that voice is so familiar, but I can't put, you know, I just can't put that face to it. Because, I mean, <laughs> and she looked the way she did. Just her hair was, like, so different, you know. Like, she she rocked a shorter haircut, you know, in her later days, you know. But back then, she always had it pretty her hair pretty long. But she had, a, like, a shorter, like, shoulder-length haircut then. And it was, like, she almost unrecognizable. But, and Kane Hodder from, oh, uh, from uh, Friday the 13th. So, you know, what he's real famous for. But, and so as they've, you know, we're, they've start you know, sharing the post, you know, it's months out. And they announce all these people come in and, you know, some some cool names. But, like, you know, I, you know, it's like, so these are the best names we're going to get. I hope the, hope everything at the convention's cool because it'd be nice to see them. Hi, how you doing? Shake your hand. You know, I thought you were pretty cool in this film. Uh, if there's nobody like, real significant there, it's like I'm yeah. like, I'll still go, but I'm just really hoping there's a lot of stuff going on at, at the con itself. So that's just the celebrities. But then they announced, I think Caroline was the first one they announced, and I'm like, okay, I'm absolutely there. And then, much to my surprise, they announced Bill Mosley being there, and I'm like, I don't care if, you know, if my, <laughs> wife, my wife tells me she's pregnant again and she's going into labor that day. Somehow I'm gonna get to the con and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get home, you know, to be with my wife, you know, pushing out our our second child. But thanks that that hasn't happened. Yeah, luckily, <laughs> luckily that, that happened. did not happen. Nothing nothing came in the way that really made me question, you know, okay, how committed am I going to the con and how do I have to be somewhere else? But you know, and I, we were talking the way up, like everybody were looking forward to me, and I said, the first person I actually had to meet is Bill Mosley. I, that's got to be my first thing. And I have no idea what to expect. You know, I've never been to uh, a convention ever, a Comic Con or anything like that. So, I know like New York City Comic Cons are like humongous. They're you know, f you know, f like buildings. You know, just like as far you can't even see the whole room if you stand in the corner. And there's like two or three levels of that. You know, I've heard at some of these places. So, I have no idea what to expect. How hard it is to meet people standing in lines. I didn't want to waste everybody's time, you know, standing in line for two hours to meet somebody. But much to my surprise, it was good. It was decent size, but it wasn't overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, in the, you know, in the people, you know, in the lines weren't that bad. You know, I mean, Bill Mosley probably had the longest line that we stood in. And it moved pretty quickly, even though he was wicked nice. He'd, you know, ask, he'd ask your name and you know, who'd make out the autograph to, and, you know, would, you know, depending, you know, like I said, they all have, you know, st you know, things they bring, like pictures and movies. Of course, I brought my Texas Chainsaw Part 2 film, you know, for him to sign. So the second he saw that, and I told him my favorite movie of all time, and he's, ran, you, know, ran, you know, rambles on a bunch of his famous quotes, which was, like, freaking amazing and almost, like, geeking out so bad. He cried. Like, it's, I almost did. If you, see my, if you see my profile picture, you see my stupid look on my face <laughs> posing with him because I'm just so in awe. I just can't believe this one was happening right now. So I'm already pretty, I feel pretty good about, you know, that, you know, and I didn't totally blow it. Now you can just, I could walk, you could walk right up to Caroline Williams because Bill Mosley, Sid Haig, for, again, from Devil's Rejects, uh, Skeet Ulrich and Matthew Lillard, both from the, the both those guys from the Scream movies, they had their own tables, like they sat behind, and they were all like one next to each, you know, like two or three tables made up, you know, each person's section, and they were all lined up, you know, together. So, you know, if you walked up to them, there's usually a line, so you can like just walk up and like, hey, how you doing? You know, my name's so and so. Be on your way. But everybody else had like booths kind of the side you can just there's no table you just walk right in hmm. you know and caroline williams was one of them I mean, you just just walk right into her booth walk right up to her and i said i just uh, we're just standing right there there's somebody talking to her i could have been rude and just butted in but i was polite and waited for my turn and that's the point where you know i'm just putting on my hand and i'm just like shaking like a shaking like a leaf and you know i was pointed out how you know 
beat red in the face I was getting. Yes, I, I totally wanted out. to act out a scene, but I was just so nervous I could barely could barely even get out the words to say hello. <laughs> Wait a minute. Back up just for two seconds. You wanted to act out a scene. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna, I was gonna see if you'd get it on. Cause I didn't, I don't think Hen. Well, I don't think it would be too comfortable with me hanging off your shoulders. But you probably would have got in on me with it. It's like in the scene from Texas Chainsaw Two, where she's inside, she's inside the inside the their. It's an old amusement park where she's trapped, like un, underneath where, like this maze of all these, you know, all these bodies that they've turned into like a. This you know little amusement you know like a mu amusement museum if you will and Leatherface is chasing her and he traps her and she's trying to you know plead her way you know to get her to get him to let her go and then the two brothers come running down you know and see that he's you know he's got somebody there and you know and trying to figure out who she is and the and the brunt and Chop Top who's played by Bill Mosley recognizes her. And it's, you know, it's the DJ who he loved listening to, but know that she had to die because she recorded them killing two yuppies earlier in the film. And, you know, and he goes, no, it's the DJ, my <laughs> babe. And he's hanging off his, he's like standing behind his brother, you know, hanging off, you know, his shoulder. And I so want to do that, like get, you know, get on Turtle's, you know, like stand behind Turtle and kind of put my hand over his shoulder and like, it's the DJ, it's my face. Oh, you should have did that. I should have, but I just couldn't freak. I said I could barely get the words, you know, hello out of my mouth. That is true. Let alone that, if we got the chance to meet her again, she'd have no clue who we are. You would do it that time. You wouldn't oh, be as definitely. nervous. I wouldn't be as nervous. I mean, it's, it'd still right. be a little, you know, a little bit because. You know, I mean, she was, everybody was so nice. I mean, I've read, you know, people's comments on people, on, you know, celebrities they've met before. Some say, you know, it's hit or miss with some of them. Others, some people are just great every time you meet them. Some people mm -hmm. are total jerks every time you meet them. So, but I've heard nothing but great things about her. So I think I'd be, I don't, I don't fear like I'd be, you know, not denied you wouldn't pass an autograph, out. but I don't feel like she'd, you know, like she'd like, you know, just like make this as quick as she can and get me on my way to get this creepo yeah. out of here. You know what was cool about the celebrities? And I discussed this with Henry on the last podcast was like every single one that we got an autograph from. For one, like if I got an autograph, you wouldn't have to pay to take a picture with the person or right. talk to the person or whatever, which was cool. And they talked like they would talk to you for a little while, if, especially if there was nobody in the line. They'll talk to you for quite a few oh, yeah. minutes. I went back and met Caroline like two or three times. And yeah, I actually broke off from you guys at one point towards the end. It was it was a great time and funny little, I guess a funny little short story. There was a part they were doing tattoos there. Yep, and we were all three of us, me, Henry, and Robert, discussing getting. You know, we were just walking by, walking by. We seen a tattoo thing. I don't know how many times we passed it. Oh, so and many we were times. Like, we were like, "Listen, <laughs> we should get a tattoo." But I was like, "Okay." We were all thinking about it, and then I was, we, I think I said, "I was like, yo, let's go get something to eat," because we were getting hungry. Went downstairs, got something to eat. We were talking about when we got something to eat. Came back upstairs. We didn't get. We did not get horror tattoos, but I feel like the next time that we go, I want to get something. Oh, definitely. Especially if that, you know, if those, you know, if that place was there. Because there was two, di I didn't even notice the second place. That was the second, that was like, up front more. Yeah, up by the Stranger Things display that you and Henry That which was awesome. Did. But, I mean, you like, Jack, like, there was Jack Skellington faces that were, like, size of a quarter, like, 60 bucks. The place that we were looking at, like, had these really good size pieces of jason, jason and, like and freddie and, and uh, bucks, right? yeah 50 bucks i mean the only problem for me i we, we all agreed the upside down we didn't cross. want to do it they were all in they were all pictured in inverted crosses but he said he could take that out he could take it out and and even was willing to do like a chop top piece for me for like i don't know he said like 150 was which like still pretty, isn't that bad no it's but i'm i'm thinking like when we go again no if we go again knowing we want to get tattoos because the hard thing about that was with this one is like like with me i got the autographs i bought a bunch of other stuff there so it's like i and i love buying stuff from there but it'll be so cool at least one time which i want to do like if i already get a horror tattoo there it'd be on one of my legs i'm not sure which one yet but i want to have like a you know i'll do like a horror type of it wouldn't be like a theme theme as far as like one movie but just like right. different horror things you get what i'm saying oh yeah i dig it 
But um, it'd be cool to get like a tattoo just because right. from there. Because like, I mean, this right here. For those of you, you've all seen Sir Sturdy, the little green statue my brother made. If I can get like a perfect drawing of this, or if I can get my brother like do like a perfect drawing of this, I would consider this because this is oh, going to yeah. be like my um my logo, so to speak, mm -hmm. along with the horror with Sir Sturdy. But this would be like the you know what I mean because this is a one of a kind thing, so nobody else would have it. But that's a maybe. But, um, yeah, like I was saying, it would be real cool to just, I love getting tattoos, for one. I love Same tattoos. Here. But it would be cool to get, like, say we go there. Say we, I'm not saying we will, but let's, let's say we go there next October. And we're like, you know what? Let's put, I don't know, 100 bucks aside. Yeah. This is tattoo money. Everything else that you can bring, whatever, I don't know what we can bring, but say 100 bucks a piece, tattoo money, cool. That way, if you have that room, like you said, the one you wanted was about a buck fifty, the chop top one. Yep. Which was not bad because there was so much detail in it. Right, and you could even like you know, I'm sure, Bill, you know, if I went up to Bill and said, "Hey, I'm about to do this here," could you just say, you know, could you just you know sign, you know, sign my leg or whatever real quick? And I'm sure he would have done it. And even oh, yeah. if and, you know, it won't even charge me because like I say, hey, look, I've already got your autograph on this on my movie here. You know, you I already I tattoo. paid for that. You know, and but and even if he didn't, I mean, still, I sat there and watched him sign my movie. That so if they awesome. took, so if they could, if they could, you know, like photocopy, you know, if they have that, if they do that there, you know, it'd probably be hard going to a convention. If you went to an actual studio, you could actually get them like copy it and then. Well, he Put, you know, make a stencil and put it on there. He had were... to have something though because he said he would have did because that tattoo, the one that idea you came up with, the chop top one, yeah, on your phone. He said he could do it for you for a buck fifty. So there's had to be somewhere where he could look it up, print it out, and do it. Right. Unless he was going to freehand it. Which yeah, he's going to freehand it. Which I mean, the artist I go to now, you know, free, you know, everything he's done on me, he's just you know just draws it on. But that, so. like, the tattoo we were going to get, it was a. Friday, well, the me and Rob were gonna get. I'm not 100 percent sure if Jason, if, sorry, if Henry was gonna get Jason Voorhees minus the cross or not. But that, that did, other than the cross, the thing was cool. Oh yeah, it was really cool. Yes. But I was thinking about it and thinking about it, and I'm like, if I go there to get a tattoo, maybe I'll go there with an idea. Maybe I'll even go up. Excuse me. Maybe I'll even go there with it already printed out, so to speak. If I have an idea in my mind. And I'm like, just in case, this is would be like my number one or maybe number two, depending on what they have there, depending on the prices and so on and so forth. But at least I have this already printed so they can do what they got to do to copy it. Right. But uh, that was a pretty cool tattoo. And this right here I'm about to show you, Rob. I've showed you guys this if you've watched my live videos before. But I got this from Monster Mania, right? It's a picture. See, it's like half my face, yep. half Jason mask. Oh, uh, yep. The guy, um, and I wish I remembered what the thing was called, like what their, you know, what their, what, who they were. But they had me, um, they go there, they take a picture of, like I was standing like this to see the pole. It's like I'm holding a machete over my head. Yeah. That was really like a soda bottle or a water bottle. <laughs> but they have me stand in that pose and they, Whatever horror icon you want, they'll do like half this. So you have like half the Jason mask and half my face. And they draw it for you. Nice. Which was pretty cool. I don't remember how much it cost. I want to say maybe 20 or 30, 40 tops, if that. But even though, that is not bad at all, you know, because that's but, a pretty, you know, detailed piece. It is. And it's a one of a kind because it's like me. <laughs> and I just, like, I just had to show you this because it was right here. But yeah, uh, I, kept, I, kept look, I couldn't really see it, you know. But you like when we kind of. We kind of stood up, you know. I could that looks. I saw something. I was kind of checking out your collection over there. I couldn't get a great look at this one from a distance, but now that I look at it, it's yeah, it's that's pretty rad. I mean, you know, somebody's got some mad talent could you oh, know yeah. piece this together in a pretty decent amount of time. Yeah, he he took the picture or whatever, and then they were like, just come back in a couple hours because we were going to be there for maybe an hour, but we came back in a couple hours. I don't really remember, you know. Yeah. I've, this was two plus years he's ago. got requests going on, so it probably didn't even take him an hour to do that. It's just you know. Just, you know, like all, every, everything I've got lined up, you know, right yeah. now, you know, within an hour, I'll have, you know, one, you know, one or two done. So, so, um, with that, 
that was actually at um the piece I was just discussing, the picture I was just discussing, that was at Monster Mania. Yep. Out in New Jersey. And I know me and my wife are gonna go again eventually. It's one of the I know your wife's not really into horror like that. No, definitely not. But if there's a way you can get her to go out there for the weekend, and I the only reason I say for the weekend, even if it's from like Friday to Saturday, preferably I'd say Friday to Sunday, but that's just me. Right. <laughs> And of course, you would agree, but you oh yeah, horror. oh yeah. But because the convention, it's so big there, like it's amazing, and like as big as the room was for Scarecon, it was a good size. Don't get me wrong, Scarecon was amazing. Oh yeah, but like, they have rooms that are about that size for just vendors, maybe half that size. But mm-hmm. still, just like they have a bunch of rooms where it's just vendors, which is cool because there's so much cool stuff you can buy from these cons. Oh yeah, that it's like you even a smaller place like we went to had yeah. a ton of it. And I don't even mean the figures. Like the figures are amazing. Don't get me wrong. If you're into collecting figures, which as you know I am, but the figures, the movies and stuff, the shirts, like they have a bunch of shirts, just a bunch of stuff where you're only gonna see. More than likely, you're only gonna see it there. But like, there's some stuff where like um. Actually, Henry got one from Scarecon a few years ago. It was made out of, I forgot what it is exactly, but it was like made out of bone. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Like, they make stuff, just random things, you know, like horror related or whatever. And it's it's cool. And there's, it's it's huge there. And it's it's definitely worth checking out. It's definitely worth going to. Like, if you're a fan of horror and... I mean, obviously, you want to save up the money for it. You want to save up a couple hundred dollars, a few hundred dollars, right. maybe even a grand. I'm not even exaggerating <laughs> because you – well, I say that because you figure the travel, food, hotel stay, yep. that right there alone, and then autographs and random horror stuff you want to get and then coming back home. But we went there. Me and my wife went there one year with the kids, had a good time. I met Kane Hodder that year. Second time we went, it was me and my wife and Henry. Another great time. That one, Robert England was at. Oh, nice. Did not get to meet him, though. But I'll discuss this real quick. He, um, like, they're giving out tickets or whatever to, you know, go up the number whatever. And you go up. You wait in this long-ass line. My wife actually waited in the line. And we got all the way upstairs. We were one room away, but there was, like, rows of seats in front of us. Mm -hmm. They were like, listen. It was around, I don't know what time it was at the time, but I want to say like maybe five or six o'clock at night, more or less, maybe a little later. He wasn't doing any more autographs. But they said, they're like, look, if you guys are staying out here, which we weren't, we couldn't at the time, you'll be first in line. You know, like this group will be first. You're guaranteed to get an autograph tomorrow. And right. we just couldn't do it, which uh, sucks, sucks because, what is he, like 80 something years? I don't know how much longer the guy's going to live. Right. I mean, you got, I mean, you got Wes Craven, who, you know, he passed. Doobie on. Hope, do, Toby Hooper just passed. Like, all these people you just think are legendary and legend. Toby Hooper, who was, was Texas he? Texas Chainsaw and Poltergeist. Texas Chainsaw. We, me and Henry were supposed to meet him. Oh, uh, no kidding. At ScareCon two years ago? Two or three years ago. But he had gotten sick. He was sick, so he was he didn't make it to the thing. And he passed away a couple of years ago, right? No, he just passed away just a couple months ago. Really? Yeah. Wow. Well, he was sick then. I don't know if it was like a heart issue or what, whatever it was. Yeah, he's 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 been bad on some issues, but I really, I mean, probably can't, probably can make nothing of it. But I just hope you know his B of a girlfriend, you know, is brought up on charges because he was hospitalized shortly before that for for abuse because wow. his his girlfriend, who's like thirty years his junior beating the hell out of him i'm just gonna let you know before we go on a little bit more you can swear on a podcast oh i know <laughs> <laughs> you said be of a girl <laughs> i'm just letting you know yeah it's like that that's just i mean I, I just can't stand you know anybody who does that to anybody you know yeah. a man to a woman a woman to a man but like you know you already got to figure you know somebody who's legendary probably you know has a decent income Mm-hmm. And that's you know it's taking it's pr- more than likely being taken advantage of, but it, it's their, it's still their own damn fault. You're still allowing it, yeah. but sometimes they just don't care. You're an old you're an old person. You just want to you know the attention. even even the, you know it's the attention, even though you know 
this person's not here with you for real, more than likely true love yeah. still, you know. It's, you know, you're getting, you're having your fun, you know, you're getting your last hoorah in your final days, but when you get somebody who's doing that to you and it's inexcusable, you know, like I said, it probably wasn't related. He probably, like I said, the fact he was sick a couple years ago couldn't make the convention. Mm -hmm. He's an older man, or, you know, was an older man. He's already having health issues. I mean, that probably certainly didn't help anything, but, you know... But at the same time, it's just how when that story broke, it was just not long after the story broke that he passed, he passed away. away. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like, um, by the way, everything's so technical nowadays. I mean, if there's a case there or not, it's not, you know, it's never going to be. I doubt it'll ever, you know, yeah. ever, you know, see the light of day. But it's just unfortunate, you know, that, you know, he that, you know, that's how he spent his final days, you know. Being you know abused like that. I got another one for you, and I wish I would ask Henry this. I wish I would actually thought about this question before Chris left. <laughs> Threw this one before we end it. Um, yeah, because the weather sucks out there. Yeah. <laughs> Horror matchup. Like, you know that Freddy vs. Jason. Yep. What's your dream matchup? It can be any matchup, and you can even think of like a little quick story. I'll go with mine first, just so you can think. My dream matchup. Is Freddy? Oh, sorry, no, not Freddy. Nothing against him, but not him. Michael Myers versus Jason Voorhees. I'm gonna tell you. I know what you're all thinking. They don't talk. They don't need to talk. How would they meet up? I'm gonna tell you how they'll meet up. For some strange reason, Michael always knows where his sister is. Am I right? Yep. So let's say she goes to Camp Crystal Lake. For whatever, you know, for a little summer vacation. And you all know the story behind Camp Crystal Lake slash Camp Blood. But let's say they changed the name of the camp because it stopped, you know, to stop scaring people away from it. So say she goes to the camp, you know, on a Friday the 13th or whatever, or around Halloween, either or. Because if you go to that camp, you're going to get killed. Put it that way. Yep. So say she goes to the camp. And, you know, stuff's going on, blah, blah, blah. People are getting killed. And wherever the hell Michael is, say he's in Haddonfield, but somehow he gets the jersey to that camp because he can drive. I don't know who the hell taught him to drive. That was a terrible idea. That was stupid. I know. He's been, <laughs> I said, there's multiple films, you know, he's been, you know, it's like from since he was, you know, a little boy till he was uh, an adult man. He's been locked up in a mental asylum. Breaks out one day and he can drive a car perfectly. Someone taught him in that. <laughs> but anyways, you know, they meet up at Camp Crystal Lake. Say bot, people end up, say she's there for a couple of nights before stuff happens. But it doesn't have to necessarily be Friday the 13th. It doesn't necessarily have to be Halloween. Let's say it's kind of in between. Right. But um, again, like I said, people are getting killed here and there. People end up missing here and there. And she thinks it's her brother after her. So she's, obviously she's getting nervous, whatever. But say, obviously it's not her brother. It's Jason. But her brother's on his way there. Right. Now, back and forth, say Michael gets there, Jason's there. They're killing people, and people know the legend of Michael. Or sorry, people know the legend of Jason, but they don't know the legend of Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. So say some people, they see Michael, they get killed by him or whatever. They see somebody killing Michael, and they're like, you know, what's going on? I thought he had a hockey mask. And then say his sister, Jason, or sorry, Michael's sister sees Jason killing people. And she's like, kind of like, what? You know, that's not Michael. Or she says Michael. So let's say she yells Michael. But he doesn't, you know, Jason's doing his thing. And he looks over because he hears somebody yelling. He just goes after her. And somehow she's running or whatever, obviously. She's running into the woods. And somehow she runs into Michael. And Jason's like right behind her because these fools, they walk. But somehow they're always right there. Yep. <laughs> they're always right there. And Jason, that's his woods. That matchup would be such an amazing fight. And I say this because they're both big, you know, they're b big, strong people or whatever you want to call them. Right. They're big, strong figures. Let's say that physically. Now, I'm going to be biased on this because Friday the 13th, Jason's my favorite slasher icon of all time. I say Jason wins. How? I have no idea. But I think he can win. I think he would win. Does he drown Michael? Does he cut his head off? Who knows? But that's like my dream matchup right there. That would be such an awesome matchup. 
I know people say, oh, there won't be a lot of dialogue and talking, but there, between those two, there really doesn't need to be, and that's why you have the other cast around them. Because right. in all the other movies you've seen with them, they really didn't... I mean, Jason didn't talk at all. Michael did in the remake as a kid and stuff. But yep. other than that, he didn't say anything. So I'm going to pass it on to you if you can think of any. Just a quick one. Just because just it'd be this is, you know, almost a humorous one. It's like Chucky versus Leprechaun. That like, was oh, my gosh. That, I mean, that's just a thought. Of that. It's hilarious. You know, two, you know, you know, little killers. But, you know, but on a more serious note and still with a little humor to it, how they would pull it off. I never get much deep thought, but I think like Otis from House of a Thousand Corpses and Devil's Rejects versus the same actor versus Chop Top from Texas Chainsaw. Oh, man. He, somebody actually presented that idea to Bill Mosley one time. You know, and he's like, I don't know who would, you know, just like, like you know, just a random time, like, you know, okay, if there was your two legendary characters face off against each other, who would win? And he's like, I have no idea. I really don't know. But, I mean, you know, but why I like that idea is because, I mean, A, it's two very personality characters mm -hmm. and even, you know, very humorous at times because Bill Mosley has this one of the greatest, you know, voices and, you know, and humor when he uses it. Do you know, in you know the way he talks and acts in his films, and also, even though there's you know talks of another another uh, Devil's Rejects movie getting made or another film based on that family getting made, and it never saw the light of day, but there was a you know a Chop Top's own movie was made oh, by Toby gosh. Hooper's son. But it just never, it never got put out, you know, mainly due to, you know, um, you know, due to budget. Okay. But, you know, and it, it was super B movie, you know, the preview that you can find, that's all you'll ever see of it. It was super, you know, cheap and cheesy. But Those Bill Mosley did, did, yeah, yeah, but I mean, Bill Mosley did, was going to star in it, or did star in it, even though it never, never, seen never, never got to be made, never got to be put out, but... That's but, you know, even though both of them got, you know, at the both end of both films seem like they both met their end, still, both, there's talks of another movie getting made on one and another movie did get made on the other. So both, you know, can withstand a good hurt, a good hit like most of these horror characters can, but, but, you know, they're both, they're both mortal and they both can die. So at the end mm -hmm. of the movie, more than likely one or both won't be standing. You know, it's not like a mystery, like the way Freddy versus Jason ended. You know, okay. Jason seems to have the upper hand, but Freddy clearly, Winks at the end. you know, isn't dead. He's and just ahead, but... They never... Yeah. But that... The first <laughs> matchup you said, because I'm not... I've never seen The Devil's Rejects, so I'm not familiar with that, but I'm going to speak on the first matchup. That would be, unlike the one that I brought up, there would be a lot of dialogue in that movie. That movie would be hilarious. It would, I mean, it's, I mean it's, it's two little people. You know, first of all, and both of them have pretty, you know, catchy and memorable, yes. you know, lines and, you know, and, you know, and very comical at times. I mean, that's what kind of, some people say ruined child's play, like when Bride and Seed came out. Because it, it went from the dark to just, and you could say but, the same about Leprechaun, though. Like, oh, yeah. The first one, the original, I don't remember it 100%, but it was a lot darker than when we discussed in the podcast. Right. But earlier. I mean, but that's exactly the way... Nightmare on Elm Street was first two were first two films were super dark. Third was kind of in between. After that, it was, all, it was almost like yeah, yeah, this goofy right. comedy. But when they brought, but when they brought it back to you know Freddy versus Jason, it was yeah, it was in pretty serious. It was it was serious business. But the, um, the Leprechaun versus Chucky would be, I would like to see that. And did you see? You've seen the Cult of Chucky, right? Yeah. Yes. Whatever the last was yep. that the Cult? Yep. Seen all of them. Now you remember when he had all the dolls? Yep. That would be that would make that movie seeing that having him do that where he possessed all the other dolls against the leprechaun would be awesome because leprechaun's bigger than Chucky. Right. So that would be a you know a cool thing to you know maybe introduce like almost um, you know maybe about three quarters of the end of the movie bring yeah. that bring that in. And I say that you don't see it coming. The leprechaun he has the, he has his little magic leprechaun powers and all yep. that stuff. And. Like the, just the fight would be the fight would be. I know so that's like funny. that's just like what, what would be make it would make the movie. The fight and then just what they're saying to each other, right? Because I feel 
say Chucky's going after somebody or whatever. Or, matter of fact, let's say Chucky gets the Leprechaun's gold somehow. Right. And he's... For whatever reason, he'd want it. Yeah. He gets it. Leprechaun goes after Chucky, and they just... they have, Obviously, they're gonna, there's going to be casualties in the movie. There has yep. to be. But just the fight between them would be so freaking funny. And I don't know who's in control of that, but make it happen. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> make exactly. it happen. I say yeah. that... You've heard it here first. Yes. Make that happen. The Michael versus Jason would be awesome, amazing as a fan, my fan standpoint. I'm sure Rob would love to see it too. But the Chucky versus Leprechaun, people would like that just because it would be hilarious. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't go in to take that movie serious. You'd Not go in for, you know, for, you know, some, some blood and guts, but also at the same time, a lot of laughs and a lot of humor. Exactly. A lot of goofiness. So. And I say make it. Don't even make make it like a straight to Netflix or straight to DVD type of movie. Oh yeah, I think it'll be a big release. More like it wouldn't be anyways. But I would even love to see a fan made a fan made film of that, if possible. I know it'd be kind of tough. Plus, yeah. you need Brad to do the voice. Right. And but, you um, got to get you know, and you got to get uh, War, Warwick Davis to do Leprechaun. Or so. jumping back to the Jason versus Michael, that could also work as a fan made fan made film, possibly. Oh, yeah. That would be a fun one. Because you don't got to do voices. You just got to find two big guys, you know, don the outfit and the mask. And fight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, you have the story. You don't necessarily need Jamie Lee Curtis to play his sister. You could have somebody else no. play it. How many films have you had without her? Because like I said, just fine. with the Never Sleep Alone movie, I'm just jumping to this real quick. Go see it, for one. Watch it on YouTube. But um, like the, whoever did that, I think they'd be able to pull this movie off. You could have somebody that played that maybe kind of looks like Jamie Lee Curtis, just so it kind of portrays his sister, so people understand. And right. like, oh, that's you know, that's that's her. But um, I'm gonna wrap this up. The weather's kind of getting bad out there. Rob has to take off. I know for a fact he will be back for sure, definitely. So I'm gonna tie this up, and I had a great time with this podcast. I'm glad both of these gentlemen came and helped me out with this. I'm sure they'll be on more. I know Henry will be on more. Um, thanks for listening. And uh, I'll see you in your nightmares. <laughs>